Do you know what this symbol is called? Even if you don't know, you probably know that it's a short form of the word and. But is it always acceptable to use it? And did you know that it used to be a part of the alphabet? All this and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, do like, follow, subscribe to The English Nut on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Thank you. First things first. This symbol is called an ampersand. It's an abbreviation of the word AND. A useful abbreviation, right? Helps you save time, effort and space. But here's the thing. Most of the time, you can't use the ampersand in formal writing. So what's the point of having an abbreviation if you can't use it? Well, you can and should use it in certain specific contexts. And I'm going to tell you what those are. You can use the ampersand when it's an official part of a name. Although the use of ampersands is usually considered informal, they are often a formal part of company names. Ogilvy and Mather, Johnson and Johnson, Dolce and Gabbana, Abercrombie and Fitch, Marks and Spencer, Tiffany and Co, Byrne and Co. Do note that when the company name is reduced to its initials, the spaces go O&M, AT&T. You can use the ampersand in other sorts of names too. For example, there's the famous four-member rock band known as Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. They decided to use the ampersand in their name, so that's how we should write it too. It can also be used to refer to multiple authors of a book, Wren and Martin, for example. Back in the day, the universal textbook of English grammar was high school English grammar and composition. It was written jointly by P.C. Wren and H. Martin. On the book cover, their names were abbreviated as Wren and Martin. Everyone referred to the book simply as Wren and Martin. And the sight of the book with its characteristic red cover evoked terror in generations of students. The ampersand is used in a unique way in screenwriting credits, at least in Hollywood. If you see the names of two writers for a screenplay connected by an and, it means they both worked on the script, but at different times. If their names are connected by an ampersand, it means they worked on the screenplay together. So the ampersand in this context suggests a closer collaboration than an and. Such shades of meaning packed into a little symbol. The ampersand is sometimes a part of the title of a creative work, a book, magazine, movie, song or album. For example, there's a book called Eats, Shoots and Leaves, which happens to be my favorite book on punctuation. And there's Marley and Me, the novel about a dog called Marley, named after Bob Marley and the family that owned it. Here's a fun fact about the movie based on the book. As it covers 13 years of Marley's life, the part was played by 22 different Labrador retrievers. The ampersand is used in citations as well. A citation is a quotation from or a reference to a book or paper in a scholarly work. If you write a research paper, for example, in which you cite another paper written by, say, Sen, Roy and Gupta in 2010, then you can write it like this. The ampersand is used in certain universally accepted abbreviations of terms containing the word and. Here are some examples. R and D for research and development. B and B for bed and breakfast, P and L for profit and loss, R and R for rest and relaxation, Q and A for question and answer, R and B for rhythm and blues. The ampersand is also used with the full form of rhythm and blues when it is a part of a list to indicate that it is the name of a single item. Here's a sentence to illustrate what I mean. I like to listen to pop, rhythm and blues jazz, country and western, rock and classical music. Here rhythm and blues is the name of a single genre of music, not two different ones. Similarly, country and western is a single genre of music with a double-barreled name. The ampersand is used to address letters to more than one person, especially couples. Mr. and Mrs. Sinha or Rina and Ravi Sinha, etc which is usually written as ETC full stop, can also be abbreviated like this. 
That's because the et in etc. is Latin for and. Until the early 20th century, the ampersand symbol was treated as the 27th letter of the English alphabet. Traditionally, when students recited the alphabet, any letter that could be used as a word by itself, a, i, and o, were repeated with the Latin expression per se, meaning by itself. So instead of reciting the alphabet as A, B, C, you would say A per se A, B, C, and so on. You would also say I per se I and O per se O when you came to those letters. You would end your recitation not with X, Y, Z as we do now, but with X, Y, Z and per se and. Over time, and per se and was slurred to ampersand which ended up entering the dictionary as a word in its own right. There is an old rhyme called Apple Pie ABC, which was used to teach children the alphabet. The first mention of the rhyme is in a religious text from as far back as 1671. The oldest printed version of the entire rhyme is in a spelling book called Child's New Plaything, published in London in 1742. The rhyme goes, A was an apple pie, B bit it, C cut it, D dealt it. It continues in this fashion and ends with V viewed it, W wanted it, X, Y, Z and ampersand all wished for a piece in hand. It is said that the ampersand symbol started life as graffiti on a wall in Pompeii in the first century. It was modeled after an ancient shorthand system called Tyronean notes. It is derived from the ligature of et, the Latin word for and. The word ligature generally means something that ties or binds things tightly. In the context of writing, printing and typography, a ligature occurs when two or more letters are joined as a single unit. It was by the late 8th century that the ligature of et morphed into a symbol that is similar to the ampersand we use today. One of the reasons the ampersand has not just survived but thrived is that it is something of a playground for typographers who love to come up with wonderful variations on its basic design. There are 58 ampersands, for example, in a font called Poetica, introduced in 1992. It is based on chancery hand, which was a form of Roman calligraphy developed in the 13th century. That was a lot of information about one tiny symbol. I hope you found it interesting and useful. Do let me know in the comments below. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.